Resuming debate at our Prise du Débat, the Honourable Member for Desnethay, Mississippi, Churchill River. It is very important for me to stand up here in the House today and take part of this debate, not only to speak for Ottawa Piscat, but also to highlight the challenges being met by my residents in my riding. Before I begin, though, I want to share a personal story. Suicide affects not only me and my family. My brother has had a challenge of losing three of his own children to suicide in the past eight years. And over the years, I've seen how both levels of government um, fail communities like Lalash for by not providing services in mental health and other programs. So this is a very touching, sensitive issue. Today I received many stories to share in this house, but before I begin, I want to say thank you to everyone who shared their stories with me so that I can share it with you, the, the audience in the House of Commons. The personal stories are very sensitive, heartbreaking, and very sad. These stories also show the resilience and the hope that exists in our communities and reserves across Canada. The personal stories indicate that the First Nations and Métis children, young people and their families require immediate help and support. The immediate help now and the immediate help for years to come. These, the personal stories indicate that the First Nations and Métis children are looking for us to give them hope, are looking for Canadian government to give them hope, and for industry, from service providers, and for all levels of people to give hope to First Nations and Métis children across Canada. This first story comes from a health care provider in northern Saskatchewan. This health care provider had to travel 600 kilometres to Saskatoon from her community to seek help for her daughter, who tried to kill herself over the last few days. She couldn't find the help in her own community because the existing health care services available are inadequate and insufficient. She, she as a health care provider, struggled with getting a referral to see a mental health spe specialist. I can just imagine how hard it is for people who don't have access to medical services and to other services. Not all families in northern Saskatchewan, what Ottawa, Piscat, and other communities have resources to take their children to see specialists. Reports indicate for northern Saskatchewan and far north and northern communities the, the lack of services and how poor these communities are. Let me share another story from a member of the Gitsan community in BC. This person knows of over 100 suicide attempts in their community alone, and some were successful. The community was seeking to build a new arena so that the children can find a place to gather and play without having to bargain with major companies to have it done. This past weekend alone, I'm very sad to say, I'm sad to say because there are more suicide attempts in Lalage since the shooting of January 22, 2016. Since that day, I stood here before, before you and before the, uh, the House of Commons parliamentarians requesting additional services from both levels of government. Unfortunately, it is sad to say that the help has not come in the form of many levels. The children and the youth in Lalage and the surrounding communities are showing signs of PTSD, and they have no one to turn to and nowhere to go. The schools are doing what they can to provide services and to provide sports and recreational programs, but that is not enough. The families are left on their own to, to mend for themselves and to take, try to take care of their problems with no help, no help from the health center and no help anywhere else. Someone today, another person wrote to me that the suicides and the attempts of suicides across the country is a, system, is a symptom of systemic failure and I couldn't agree more. Parents feel hopeless as they try to do their best to provide for their children. We live in Canada and we should not be able to feel hopeless, yet our First Nations and our Métis communities across Canada feel hopeless. 
We can speak to issues of lack of cultural and recreational facilities and programs, the high rate of unemployment and poverty, poor housing, poor infrastructure, high cost of food, high cost of living, no mental health support and other services. Communities like Laloche, Attawapiskat, Cross Lake, Gitsan, and other communities straight across Canada require help, not band-aid solutions. Not it's nice to get visits, but that isn't good enough. We need concrete help and we need more funding to assist our communities across Canada to make sure that we in our communities are helping our young people and their families to, to deal with the problems at hand. Some examples that were given to me, shared to me by the, uh, the residents who shared their stories include language, immersion programs, and retention programs in Dene, Cree, Michif, and other languages, First Nation languages. Other examples of suggestion made, more cultural and recreational facilities to keep the young people and their families busy. Cindy Blackstock has a dream for Canada's birthday, a country where First Nations children no longer have to fight for equality. I share her dream, but we can't wait until next year. We have to fight for them now. We can't lose any more of our children and beyond. Mr. Speaker, the government promised to implement the Truth and Reconciliation recommendations in its entirety. This is the time to act because it's 2015. Oops, I forget. It is now 2016. Thank you. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Northwest Territories. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Member for bringing attention to this uh, very uh, serious issue across Canada. I come from Northwest Territories and uh, suicide is also a, a very uh, big issue there. The suicide rates in Northwest Territories are double the national average and uh, they're not restricted only to Aboriginal people. Uh, however, it's the leading, leading cause of death amongst uh, First Nations, Métis and Inuit people across Canada. It's the ninth leading cause of mortality in all ages and genders. The um, government of Northwest Territories did a, a study uh, in 2014 and it concluded that there was 121 suicides within a 15, uh, 15 year period and they were highest amongst the Inuit, three times the territorial rate. And the non-Aboriginal population made up of 27% 20, of the suicides. Most of the uh, suicides were uh, male, 79%, and 21% of the suicides were female. There's a lot of risk factors that uh, we can point to. Alcohol and drug use, depression, emotional stress, housing, poverty, education, all these things. Trauma are all issues that uh, contribute to this issue. We need to be able to prevent suicides and we need to be able to have people connect to their families, community and culture. We need clinical care for uh, mental, physical and substance abuse disorders. And there's many other things that we can point to. Uh, but we have to conclude that people that are committing suicide usually feel overwhelmed, hopeless, helplessness, desperate and alone. And we need programs and preventive strategies that target specific high-risk people. And I'd like to ask the question to, to the member about how a relation, nation-to-nation uh, -nation relationship would help on this issue. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Desnete, Mrs. I Nippy, Mr. Churchill Rick. that my friend is asking this question. I'm a Dene-speaking person, and he comes from the Northwest Territories. Nation-to-nation -nation means to me, first of all, language retention. I speak Dene, I want to be able to, to have our First Nation communities teach Dene and continue with our languages and across Canada, other First Nations and Métis. Nation to Nation also means spiritual 
spiritual, spirituality being acknowledged. Practices of sweet grass burning, uh, medicine smudging, being able to have access to an elder, a priest, a pastor of any kind, being ability to pray. Nation to nation means I feel respected and welcome. As an Aboriginal woman, I don't have to feel scared in Canada because the statistics prove that as an Aboriginal woman, I run the risk of being murdered or mm. missing. So nation to nation means for me and for all First Nations and Métis people across Canada to feel safe and to feel valued in Canada. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Kamloops, Thompson Caribou. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, again, thank you to my colleague for a very powerful speech. Um, she talked about how uh, Lalosh had not got the services that they required, so I'm wondering if she can maybe elaborate both in the short term and the long term, and mostly the short term, um, you know, what was she hoping that would be there in terms of support and what she's missing? Member for Desnethe. Mississippi, Churchill River. Young people, children, and their families, when they're feeling the effects of PTSD, the need to go to the health center or the ban office clinic and saying, I need to speak to someone because I'm feeling stressed and overwhelmed. And they walk in and there's no one to talk to them. That's the immediate help in the area of mental health and counseling in other areas. I've heard and I've read over and over again how when young people and the children and their families have access to programs and services, they keep being busy, they're kept busy, and they have other things to do in their lives, and they feel important and valued. That's area. Another, for another area, for our families, children, youth, moms and dads across Canada, we've heard in this house over and over again about the importance of employment. Yet when we turn to statistics, Unemployment is very high in Northern Canada, first, among First Nations and Reserves. To feel that important level of nation to nation, the opportunities in our communities that must be available for employment is not. And so therefore, a number of areas uh, of help from all levels of government is required. Thank you. Resume.